Hello and welcome to part two of RedCap survey training. Uh, again, I will start by pointing out that we're using RedCap version 9.1.16 here. So if things look slightly different to you, it could be that you're using a different version of RedCap. Um, but that's okay. Generally, the same principles still apply here. <clears throat> so in our previous video, we created our first survey and took a look at some of our survey settings. Now, the next thing we want to do is figure out how to deploy this survey. And so the place to do that is under Survey Distribution Tools. And this is one of those things that did change in version 9.0. Uh, previously, this link used to be called Manage Survey Participants, but it's essentially still the same thing as it was before. So within our Survey Distribution Tools, uh, we've got three different tabs here um, with different uh, components of Survey Distribution, which I guess makes sense. But basically, if you wanted just to create a quick and dirty survey that you wanted to send out to a few people over email, uh, you're basically done. Uh, you've got your public survey URL here, which you can copy and paste and just send this over email or paste it into your browser, which uh, let's go ahead and do that right now just to see what our survey actually looks like. Okay. So, interestingly, our logo has not appeared. Let's just try refreshing. There we go. <clears throat> so we'll see our logo, our title, our little description here, and our beautiful looking enhanced checkboxes. So let's enter in some values here. And because we uh, split our survey into multiple pages using the sections headers, that's why we're seeing this next page option here. So we have the next question, I smoke cigarettes, are you trying to quit? Yes, sure. And you'll see that we have both the previous page button, our save and return later button. Uh, both of these we enabled in our survey settings page. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna hit submit. And then we have our little message here that says, thank you for taking the survey, have a nice day. Let me close that and it closes the tab. So that's, uh, that's about as simple as it gets. Uh, which is fine. I actually have made a lot of surveys where we've just done a single form with a little public survey URL like that and uh, very easy. So we can take a look at some of the other options we here uh, some of the other options we have here for deployment. Um, first of all, we have a new feature in version 9 which is using Google reCAPTCHA. Um, and this is something that people had asked for a few times uh, when we were setting up surveys in the past. Um, just to protect against spam and bots. So if you enable this, um, and let's see what happens. Um, well, we can see what happens by looking at this next feature by this button here that says open public survey. And all this button does is really just open up this link. So it's just a handy little shortcut to have. And so you'll see now when we open up our survey, we get this little recapture box and you can say you're not a robot. And then we're gonna get these impossible recapture things to do, which I am never able to do. Let's see, crosswalk. All right, let's give that a try. All right, success. And then we'll just go into our survey once again. Um, so it's a nice little feature to have, uh, maybe a bit annoying. I hate filling these things out, but if you do find that you're having trouble with bots or spam, uh, it's something you might want to consider enabling. Um, Okay, so we have a few other options here. So like I mentioned, we have this open public survey button here. Uh, we have the next button, open public survey plus log out. So this was added because you'll notice that when you click this button, uh, it opens up your survey, but then it will leave uh, RedCap open in the background. And so if you're doing something like uh, handing a tablet to a participant, you don't want them to potentially start taking the survey, but then click over to this tab and start messing around with your project. So the RedCap admins added this button just to both uh, open your public survey and log out at the same time to kind of disable that, or basically to prevent people from coming into RedCap and changing things. Um, so it's nice to have, it just saves you a couple extra clicks basically. Uh, you can send the URL via email, which uh, I don't think I've ever done before, but it will just send it to whatever email address is associated with your account. Um, still not exactly sure why you would do that when you can just get the URL here, but it exists nonetheless, I suppose. And then you also have uh, the option to deploy your survey with a QR code or a survey access code. So this is just a generic survey link that anybody can use for anything. Um, and then if somebody wanted to take your survey, they could put in this little access code. 
Uh, a nice little handy feature to have is that if this is too long, you can shorten that um, down to five characters. And this will be active for the next hour, I guess, um, given the time. Um, so basically, this would be used if you're sitting with a participant and wanted to um, just have them log in on a tablet or phone or something and save them from having to type in this long code. Um, and you can also go ahead and print this out and hand it to a participant if you so choose. Uh, we've got a few other options here. So we can create a little short link if we're not happy with this long link or think it might be too hard for people to um, type that all in. Uh, we could shorten it up here using this uh, j.mp service. Um, at some point, I know there's been some discussion about RedCap creating its own link shortening service because I believe this is a third party service right now. And this would be something that would have to be enabled by your RedCap administrators. Um, but for now, that's what it is. Uh, if you wanted, you can actually customize that link. Uh, let's see if that works. Yeah. The problem with your short links is that many of these already exist, so you might have to be a little creative sometimes. Let's try that again. Uh, let's just put a 2019 on there too. Come on. Yeah, all right. So we got this custom survey link, which is great. So we could send that out or put that on a poster if we wanted. Um, and we can release that at some point if we want to. Again, this is another one of those things that I've never actually used before, but there are some cases where I suppose it could be useful. And lastly, we have this embed code if we wanted to actually embed our survey into um, a web page, and it's just generating some HTML here, so nothing too fancy going on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for public facing surveys. Again, this would be if you just have a generic link that you don't really care who answers it, you just want to send it out over email or post it on a poster somewhere. But let's say you wanted to send your survey to specific people and you did want to know whether or not they responded. Well, in that case, you would use the participant list. So with the participant list, uh, things start to get slightly more complicated. Um, one, in the fact that uh, it requires a little bit more customization, but two, in that you're now starting to enter in uh, participant email addresses. And so this is where things could get a little more sketchy um, in terms of PHI, because, um, well, depending on how you set it up, uh, there could be potential here to start linking participant email addresses to the data. And even if you're not linking them directly, uh, just having the email address in this list here saying that you've sent them a survey and that they've potentially responded could present, uh, present a potential security risk or privacy risk. So if you're going to start doing this, you want to make sure that you've cleared it with the REB. Um, of course, this is for research. If this is like a staff survey or something less formal, like a quality, uh, a, a quality improvement project, um, maybe don't need to be so careful or as careful, but it's definitely just something to be aware of. So. Um, to go ahead and start using the participant list, uh, all you need to do is add participants. So you can just add in an email address here. And you can add in as many as you want. You just have to add each participant as a new line. So if you did have like an Excel sheet or something with a big list of email addresses, this would be the place to post it. And you'll see I get added to the list here. And you'll, you'll see that there's actually already an entry here. And this is because I completed that survey just from the public survey link. And you can see that I've responded here. Um, but again, we get sort of the same options. Uh, we have the survey link that we can send, or rather, I guess, just click. And this will take me to the survey. Just going to close that. Um, and then we have the same options here to give a uh, survey access code or QR code to me in this case. Um, and if we want, we can also just remove this. Um, but it's important to note that you can only remove it up until the person responds. After they've responded, you'll notice that there's no option to remove the entry here. Um, so one other thing to point out here, as it stands now, uh, if I were to go ahead and um, click the link or uh, send the survey access code, uh, the only information I would get back is whether or not I've responded. So. Of course, if I'm the only person in this project and I respond, you'll be able to see 
what my answers are, which is not ideal in some cases. Um, but if you did have a big list of people, uh, you'll be able to see if they responded, but you won't be able to figure out whose data belongs to who. So that is one layer of um, privacy protection, I suppose. But say there were some cases where it is actually important for you to know which data uh, belong to which person. In that case, you can enable this participant identifier. And uh, it's just reminding you here that because of this, the survey is no longer considered anonymous. Um, so just be aware of that. And now you can go ahead and enter a specific participant ID here. In this case, maybe I'll just say 001. And when you save that, uh, what happens now is that when I respond to this email, it will say responded, and then I'll also be able to go directly into the record to see all of the responses that I made. Um, so again, like I said, there might be certain cases where this is actually what you want, but you need to be aware of the trade-off in privacy and potential um, security issues there. Uh, another thing to point out is that if you go ahead and enter somebody, oops, um, you can just delete this. If you do go ahead and enter somebody but forget to put in their participant identifier um, and then they end up responding to your survey, uh, their data will be, I guess, semi-anonymized insofar as that you won't be able to click in directly into the record. And I know that even I've made this mistake a couple times where if you just forget to put it in um, because there's nothing forcing you to, uh, that could lead to some issues uh, where you won't know whose data belongs to who. So it's always important that you put this in if that's in fact what you're trying to do, um, which I guess I will do in this case. Okay, so now you've got your email address entered in. Uh, as I said, you can print out the survey access code and open up the survey link here. But if you actually wanted to send this as an email to somebody, your best bet is to click this Compose Survey Invitations button. And so this will give you a few options here in terms of how you actually want to send this email. So you can send it immediately or uh, schedule it for a particular date and time. Uh, I find for me, I, I usually just send them immediately. Uh, you can enable reminders. So if the person doesn't respond to your survey um, after a certain amount of time, uh, you can send a little reminder email. So you have the option to send it uh, kind of on a day, weekday, particular day, um, a certain relative number of days or particular date and time. And you can also specify up to five reminders. Uh, I guess the RedCap developers decided to limit it at that so you didn't inadvertently annoy people if they just didn't want to respond to your survey. Um, in your actual uh, Compose message section here, uh, you can specify any email address that's associated with your account, in this case, just my own email address. And you can put in your subject line. Um, so, I mean, at this point, you're just writing a an email, so nothing fancy here. And the to field is always going to be uh, it's going to take from the participant list. So you'll actually notice here that your full participant list, list will be shown, uh, but we've only got one person entered, so it's just going to check them by default. But if you did want to send uh, an email or a specific email out to you know 100 different people, uh, all of those people would be here, and you could send them all the same email here. The last thing to point out, and this is quite important, is when you are writing your email, um, it does give you some generic text here, but the most important thing to remember is that you need to have at least one of these, so either survey link or survey URL uh, in square brackets. Because, well, yeah, and ideally you'll want to have both um, given the generic text here. Um, but these two little uh, smart variables here are actually what be providing, th these will be what are providing the, the survey links to your um, participants here. So if you delete these and send the email to your participant, in fact, RedCap gets kind of angry when you try to do that. Um, if you delete them, your participants will just kind of get a blank email with nowhere to go. So it is pivotal that you include uh, these two smart variables here. And then there is this note here that like every uh, survey URL that is sent to every participant here is going to be unique to that person. So you don't want people forwarding these emails around. But once you're happy with that, you can click send. Oops, what have I done here? If you're enabling reminders, please make sure all reminder choices are selected. Oh, okay. I'm not going to send reminders this time. So I'll uncheck that and I'll say save. 
and everything has been successfully sent. So you'll see we get this little message sending box here. And what we can actually do to confirm is to go to our survey invitation log tab here. And you'll see that our invitation is scheduled to be sent at 3.29, which I'm assuming is basically right now. Um, what's actually going on here is your email invitation is been, has been scheduled on the server, and I believe it checks every two minutes or every one minute um, to see if there are any scheduled surveys, and then it will send them off. So probably if we refresh, great. It's no longer in the queue here because it has been sent out. Um, and what we can do, we can, so by default, we're seeing all future invitations. Um, but if we wanted to review to confirm, we could click this view past invitations button and we'll see that it was successfully sent here. Um, sometimes if there is an error, which does happen from time to time, you know, if the person's email address is no longer active or if there's like a, an issue with the server, uh, you may see a red message here indicating that there was an error and that it didn't get send, sent. Uh, but in that case, you can just resend it and it should be fine. Okay, so uh, I think I will stop it there. Um, we've kind of covered how to use the participant list to send out emails. And I will say that when I'm deploying surveys, uh, the participant list is usually what I would use um, for like a research project or a survey-based project. Uh, usually actually would do this over using the public facing survey link um, because I do want to check how many people have responded to the emails um, based on, on my list of uh, participants here. Of course, it will depend on your project, but I do find the participant list to be quite useful. So in the next video, I think we'll look at uh, some other options for sending survey invitations uh, using the automatic survey invitation feature. Okay, great. See you then.